Hi, so I've not really talked a lot about Elon Musk uh, before, but his recent actions and especially the uh, We Robots event that happened some time ago revealing the uh, Tesla status at the moment, which is basically so tragic, uh, I had to uh, make a video about it right now. So I'm going to be talking about Elon Musk's early history, about a couple companies he still manages to this day, uh, and I'm talk about his general view of the world and how that affects us all. So starting off with the history of Elon Musk, born on the 28th of June 1971 in South Africa, the son of a um, owner of a Zambian mine near the Tangia uh, Lake, making that person inherently very uh, rich, of course. Um, Elon Musk came into the US in 1989 at Queen's University, uh, dropped out after two years, went to the University of Pennsylvania where he got a Bachelor of Science for Physics and a Bachelor of Arts for Economy on the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. Um, it was in 1985 that he and Kimball Musk, his brother, uh, started Zip2, which was a company that would provide an online database, um, basically just kind of like an internet version of the uh, telephone book. Which the idea was that everyone could find their nearby uh, businesses and figure out how to get there. It was in 1999, however, that um, Compaq bought the company after a couple of attempts by Elon Musk to become the CEO of the company and um, apparently some economical failures as well. So, having looked at the early history of Elon Musk, let's now talk about the five companies that Elon Musk set up or took over and still owns and in many cases manages up until this day. The first of those that he set up himself being SpaceX, which stands for Space Exploration Company. But they were so much more than just another government contractor, as some people say. They had three unique goals in mind. One for the long term, two for the short term. The short term ones are actually pretty good. The first is making rockets actually reusable in their entirety. Uh, not just the uh, part that carries the passengers or the crew, if that. Uh, also the uh, first stage boots that would be used to lift off uh, the Earth's surface and escape Earth's gravity and um, any boosters that are used to get further up into space as well. Uh, he launched his first rocket, um, the Falcon 1, in 2006, about four years after the company has been set up and um, since then they've been working on this goal pretty much immediately afterwards. Another project that's actually a pretty good short-term goal is SpaceX Starlink, which is a satellite constellation in low Earth orbit designed to give high-speed broadband internet in areas where cables and uh, fiber lines cannot go because of the distance or because of national security issues. For example, being right in the middle of a war zone, um, but also Places that are simply too remote um, for cable or fiber have a lot to gain from Starlink. As do RV users, as a couple years ago apparently, uh, Starlink set up RV and uh, also marine services for proper broadband high speed internet, hopefully at an affordable price as well. But in the beginning, it's quite a bit expensive to cover development costs and the expensive equipment that is needed to uh, send and receive signals to and from the satellites. The third 
long-term vision of Elon Musk is a bit more questionable though. And that is a colony on Mars. Like, it is cool and all, but why do you really need a colony on Mars? Musk says it's to combat overpopulation and to have a plan B in case uh, climate change hits us. Well, uh, when it comes to climate change, we are much better off changing our own planet's energy and uh, materials use and switching over to renewable energy than it is to go to another planet just in case. And probably the humanity he meant over there is just the rich people who are going to be ruling over us from another planet whilst we get to uh, take what is left of our own after the global disaster the ultra capitalists created. <sighs> and when it comes to overpopulation it's a very similar story. Going to Mars is not going to solve it. We have to both identify and make our Earth itself more habitable again by changing uh, our energy and materials use. So why send humans to Mars? Uh, are there any scientific reasons for it? No. Uh, there is pretty much nothing that humans can do on Mars and robots can't. Quite the opposite in fact. Um, rovers don't have to do with a lot of the problems that humans do have to do. There's no gravity or at least different gravitational forces, no atmosphere, no oxygen, um, and basically no ecosystem that we know of. In addition, if there are any kind of microbiomes or microorganisms uh, over on Mars, Given that there is frozen water on there, there is a chance that that may be the case. Colonizing the planet might mean killing those off. Therefore killing off potentially sentient life um, before it could even grow to be sentient. So there's two sides to this company. And I do really hope they do uh, support the cause of having reusable rockets take us to space uh, for exploration purposes for example to maintain a space telescope or to serve a national or international space station but outright sending humans to Mars seems a bit too far at least for our current um, status of technology all right will this next company have something good to say about it it's called Tesla well, again, let me tell you that Elon Musk is not the founder of Tesla, let alone the Techno King. <laughs> he acquired Tesla and the title of CEO, but when he did, he put in a clause that he would be quoted as the founder of Tesla, even though the founders were just two other people normal people, namely Mark Eberhardt and Mark Tarpenning. When Elon Musk got into Tesla, though, um, they first announced the Tesla Roadster uh, sports vehicle and then a couple other uh, models of electric vehicle, the first of their kind to be made in years and be actually successful and the first use the new lithium ion battery chemistry which is more efficient than the uh, nickel metal hydride or even lead acid batteries using previous attempts and successes um, and they were so successful in fact they restarted the electric car industry pretty much setting out for examples like the Nissan Leaf um, Volkswagen ID3, Chevy Volt, Toyota Prius, and many, many Chinese car companies. And also new uh, European and American companies like uh, Rivian and Polestar. But Elon Musk uh, defended his own type of plug rather than the standard Menekes plug that we always use in the Netherlands for a long time. At first, this was a good thing because 
the Menicus and the CCS or combined charging system that would allow electric cars to charge really fast at uh, special points which is important along highways um, to allow long distance travel wasn't yet finalized but when it was um, it took some time for Tesla to end up creating a twofold within charging systems which Technology Connections argued was a pretty good idea. On one side you have um, the Menicus CCS in Europe which is the de facto standard over here and perfect for our three phase electric distribution system. On the other side you have the Tesla Nax plug which would be an open standard and use CCS or Tesla's proprietary protocol depending on if you have a Tesla or not which is still a bit weird um, but that plug is pretty much perfect for the two-phase power distribution in the US and it would uh, both openings of the systems would force other charging providers to compete against Tesla having already built out the largest network of such fast charging stations called superchargers um, again that basically kick-started the electric car revolution it's kind of the chicken and the egg problem except the chicken is almost completely there all they needed were some charging stations and a standard for plugging into the car but then Tesla took the wrong turn and Adam something talked about this one the cyber truck holy shit. I saw a couple of videos about it it's pathetic they basically did the uh, gauges on the behind the steering wheel they ditched a lot of the buttons in favor of a giant touchscreen in the center. They um, ditched the idea of the crumple zone in favor of pure stainless steel construction. And they also made a lot of sharp edges uh, in the car which could outright cause um, passengers to lose fingers. Oops. Uh, it be also looked like a very bad rendition of a pickup truck or whatever. It became pure laughing. So I'm part of an entire subreddit, r slash cyberstuck, that talks about the breakdowns and recalls of the Cybertruck, which has been recalled several times. Once over some software issue, I think. Once because the accelerator pedal could slip under a fixed component of the car that causes it to rapidly accelerate and crash into anything it encounters coming out pretty much undamaged and uh, most recently as far as I know the recall was for uh, backup cameras that lied when you put the f***ing water in reverse. And then Elon Musk and Tesla this year organized one of the weirdest and worst things I have ever let my eyeballs get exposed to. The Wii Robot announcement. So much is wrong about this. Uh, Adam something already talked about the idea behind robo taxis being pretty much bull. <laughs> they cannot replace regular mass transit because they are not intended to be used en masse. They are only really safe in uh, very sanctuated, um, clean, crimeless, rich people areas. Meanwhile, everywhere else, they basically don't, not only don't work, but actively become dangerous. Especially if you with the cyber van, 
which is a variant of the robo taxi that's a bit larger and to be owned by actual transportation agencies instead of just normal people who would own a model y which would act as a robo taxi when they were at work earning them more money that was the idea but a fleet ev electric bus we already have those things you know like the dutch ebusco that's uh another one of my subscriber to YouTube channels uh, visited the assembly line of which was in the Netherlands by the way um, why did Tesla then think let's just create an electric bus but worse for fewer people as in and I cannot even stop talking about the Tesla bot renamed Optimus what is wrong with this thing, you know? First it was some tiny robot through dancing on the podium a couple years ago and now it's actually a thing, you know? Like, why do we even need humanoid robots again? It's the same thing as the Mars colony, except it's on a smaller scale and not as dangerous. I keep those quotation marks for now. Um, these things, they should, were supposed to do literally everything, um, you know, but why have one robot that is everything and it's very expensive, well you can have a bunch of smaller robots that are cheaper but can only do one thing, you know, I don't have a humanoid robot which grabs my plates and, you know, a scrubby thing to scrub them, if I would want to automate my dishwashing I would get a fixed device with sprayer arms that directs a mixture of water and chemicals at the uh, items to be dishwashed so they become clean much faster and using much less water if I want to automate my vacuum cleaning I don't have a humanoid robot pick up the vacuum cleaner walk around at a very slow speed apparently to do the vacuum cleaning for me I would get a robot that is the vacuum cleaner that goes around a bit faster to suck up you get the idea we already have good robotic designs for most automation tasks the only real places where these things can work I think at least is where direct human contact is required. Can those places please have a higher fucking pay instead of being replaced by fucking robots? People thrive on human connections. Togetherness should be encouraged, not replaced by a robotic, automatic equivalent of it. Okay. With that out of the way, um, speaking of that robot thing, that brings us to the AI company XAI, um, which Musk set up to understand the true nature of the universe. Musk initially co-founded the nonprofit OpenAI, which created ChatGPT, but that became a for-profit company and very closed down indeed. But then Elon Musk was, I think, ousted of OpenAI, and they created their own uh, chat box, XAI, called Grok, which would be implemented in an everything app more on that a little bit later but they also created a IDE for certain types of interpretability research uh, and to help people program basically Grok 1 is actually now open source unlike ChatGPT 4.0 okay um, let's talk about that everything app which Musk was very obsessed about um, everything apps are very common in Asia, there are things like WeChat and Grab, but in established democratic western free market they won't work. 
Because we already have a lot of apps and we expect app makers to compete with each other on creating the best experience with their apps. But then Elon Musk came along and said, we're going to make the everything app. And he did it in the stupidest, most pathetic possible fucking way. He bought Twitter for 40 million US smackaroonies. Renamed the platform X and made the Twitter Blue Verified a payment service that people could use to mock other companies. Most notably, another company that will become a part of another video, perhaps another time. I hope. But then Elon Musk said they were he was uh, doing this for free speech absolutism. But then started banning stuff he didn't like personally. He banned progressive politicians. He banned apparently some cartoons and stuff. He banned parody accounts that didn't say the word parody in their profile. Which, you know, defeats the whole point of parody. He even banned the word assess because... It sounded uncomfortable to him, basically banning the entire LGBT along with it, in a way, maybe in the future. But, and I know that because Musk had a, one of the, like, 12 kids who was a transgender and wanted to go through transitioning, but Musk uh, refused to cooperate. Those kids probably all disowned Musk at some point, except the youngest. And um, then Musk, I think he worked against almost every single ban in of his platform, except for Brazil's. Holy <laughs> shit. He is not a free speech absolutist. He's just doing this, not even for the money, because he's uh, basically mass firing of people in the security and moderation department cause advertisers to flee away. And the Twitter subscription accounts couldn't even recoup that. Instead, he bought it for a bowl. He wanted, or perhaps demanded, to become the top user in the X or Twitter uh, account base. The one that everyone has to follow. Um, why? Just so that he gets his word out? Like me, I don't understand this man at this point. I used to like the products of SpaceX and um, of Tesla. I've been in my X before and it has been a great experience. Luckily it's on a Cybertruck. But since Elon Musk, since recently, I started to distress Elon Musk a lot. I mean, as soon as he announced um, the uh, acquisition of Twitter. I used to have a Twitter account. As soon as he renamed it X and acquired it, I got rid of it. Because I knew it would turn into a f***ing <laughs> cesspool. And then there is, of course, Neuralink. I've actually made a little short about this one before. Um, they're a microchip company that is uh, specializing in uh, neural implants that go into your brain. Uh, the short-term goals, of course, being, again, quite noble, like helping blind people see again or paralyzed people walk again. But the long-term goal of enabling downloadable memory, a.k.a. basically learning any kind of skill just by downloading information related to it, is total bullshit. Why? Simply put, because people want to be challenged and this kind of learning system would basically never work because of this uh, thing. So when he set up Tesla and SpaceX, I initially thought of Elon Musk as a very great progressive uh, person who is advancing society towards a new, more sustainable era um, with uh, getting us out of fossil fuel usage and exploring the stars beyond our universe, perhaps someday in the future. 
But now that I see his true behaviors, especially over on Twitter, um, or at least I used to see them on Twitter, and now in a special subreddit, uh, that's kind of a displace for uh, Elon Musk. Um, yeah, I begin to think of him as a more conservative kind of person instead. Um, as I said before, he had one of the kids who was a transgender, but he refused to let the kid transition out of like 12. So what did he have to miss? Well, a kid because they ended up disowning him. Um, another thing I had was him firstly uh, with free speech again, very weird interpretations. He sometimes, he let Nazis use Twitter. He did not cooperate with bans in many countries except for Brazil. Apparently in 2023 and 2024, Elon Musk even showed support for the death penalty. Um, he believes that white people should have as many kids as they could to combat overpopulation and the uh, great replacement between quotation marks because it's a <coughs> Nazi level conspiracy theory which states that the white race is uh, supposed to be superior above all other races yet is being replaced by uh, insert other race or culture here. <sighs> yeah, I honestly don't know what to think of him anymore. For some weird reason, it also thinks that apparently women and quote unquote low testosterone men, whatever that fucking means, uh, cannot think for themselves and therefore cannot uh, become good politicians. I really hope Kamala Harris will defy this theorem over in the US. Um, as well as that, he's now outright in a uh, fucking stupid Trump rally, aka garbage uh, pile, according to Joe Biden. I did not make this up. Um, where he said uh, he uh, supported free speech, talked about that before, and supports Trump, who is probably being supported by Vladov Budakovsky, at least electorally. Hmm. Oh yeah, and Elon Musk also has a f***ing vote lottery where anyone who declares they voted for Trump um, is given up to a million dollars for that. Uh, I really think this kind of f***ing idiocy uh, should be reported to the police as voter extortion. I mean, yeah. Democracy only works if every vote is uh, treated as equal in the immediate sense. And the only reason people vote for a party is for what they will do in the election term, not for any kind of immediate monetary benefits. Yeah. This is... And why does he support... Um, Donald Trump and the Republicans more generally nowadays? Well, I think it's because he's a rich guy and rich guys uh, love to keep their money for themselves, which is a love that is uh, shared with the Republican Party. They want a smaller government. Uh, they want to budget cut, I think, a lot on things like education, healthcare, um, and public transit, a thing Elon Musk explicitly hates, by the way, which is why his robo-taxi and cyber van uh, concepts were never really designed to transport a lot of people. He hates having to sit together with strangers, something I absolutely oppose because strangers can be friends you've never met. And I'm speaking here from experience. I've had a couple of people in the train uh, sitting next to me or I sat next to them and we talked a little bit. It generally felt refreshing, especially after a very boring or stressful day of which I have a couple of them sometimes, but not a lot, or after occasionally stepping out of the bed with the wrong leg. 
Oh, Elon Musk, uh, for his tweets and behaviour on Twitter, has apparently also earned the nickname Elmo, uh, mocking the character from Sesame Street. It's a series I grew up with. But in general, Elon Musk feels like the epitome of ultra-capitalism as a whole. Um, I think that many other ultra-capitalist rich business owners like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg also are, tend to be more conservative because um, at least in our current uh, political spectrum, uh, conservatism and ultra-capitalism pretty much go hand in hand. That one is not just true now, that was also true in the 1930s and 1940s. Anyway, I don't think I have much more to add on that about Elon Musk himself. Uh, so I'll see you another time. Bye bye! According to Joe Biden, I did not make this up, um, where he said uh, he uh, supported free speech, I talked about that before, and supports Trump, who is probably being supported by Vladov Budakovsky, at least electorally. Hmm. Yeah, um, this is, and why does he support um, Donald Trump and the Republicans more generally nowadays? Well, I think it's because he's a rich guy and rich guys uh, love to keep their money for themselves, which is a love that is uh, shared with the Republican Party. They want a smaller government. Uh, they want to budget cut, I think, a lot on things like education, healthcare, um, and public transit. A thing Elon Musk explicitly hates, by the way, which is why his robo-taxi and cyber van uh, concepts were never really designed to transport a lot of people. He hates having to sit together with strangers, something I absolutely oppose because strangers can be friends you've never met. And I'm speaking here from experience. I've had a couple of people in the train uh, sitting next to me, or I sat next to them and we talked a little bit. It generally felt refreshing, especially after a very boring or stressful day, of which I have a couple of them sometimes, but not a lot, or after occasionally stepping out of the bed with the wrong leg. Oh, Elon Musk, uh, for his tweets and behaviour on Twitter, has apparently also earned the nickname Elmo, uh, mocking the character from Sesame Street. It's a series I grew up with. But in general, Elon Musk feels like the epitome